Let's take a few minutes to talk about guns. This guy has no idea what's coming, does he? I've learned that it's become strangely important to give your credentials before anyone takes you seriously regarding this issue. No, it isn't. And if you think it is, you don't deserve to be taken seriously. What I hope to accomplish is to serve as somewhat of a bridge between the two sides. Yeah, let's serve as a bridge between lovemaking and rape. What a wonderful idea. So where does your right to own a gun come from? The fact that you're a human being with self-ownership and the right to the means of self-defense? Let me guess, he's gonna say a piece of paper, right? A fundamental human right is something that explicitly isn't written, like the right to privacy or the right to have a name. If it's written down as part of a law somewhere, it's not a fundamental human right. Now, I know what he's stretching that to mean, the right to self-defense and self-preservation. But how is that not fundamental? If you don't have the right to self-defense, how do you have the right not to be attacked, raped, or murdered? And he is kind of right when it comes to that, but there is no guarantee of what tools can be used. That part has to be written. No, you have the right to whatever tools you can obtain for that purpose. This is like saying you have the right to free speech, even though we've made all forms of speech illegal except for quill pens. It doesn't work that way. Either you have the right to whatever means you can obtain, or you don't have the right at all. Even the right to not be owned by another person had to be written down. That's how vague and abstract fundamental human rights are. Wow, really? God is never mentioned in the Constitution either. Your creator is in the Declaration of Independence, but that's not law. And here's his first bit of incredible ignorance. The law in this country is the United States Code. What's on the very first page of the U.S. Code, even before Title I? The Declaration of Independence! It's the founding document! And you are only endowed by your creator with three inalienable rights. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Lie, 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 lie! Here's what it really says. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Those are not the only three. Those three are just among them. And before you go whining, oh, he didn't say those were the only ones, because I know you people are gonna, let me play it again. And you are only endowed by your creator with three inalienable rights. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. This guy does not know what he's talking about. He doesn't even care. This is basic English. This alone is enough for us to discard every word he says. But of course, we're going to keep going. Don't want to miss the freak show after all. What's interesting about that last one is that in the original draft, it was the pursuit of property, so... Now he's just making stuff up. According to the copy of Jefferson's original rough draft, as published by the Library of Congress, it absolutely is pursuit of happiness. Your right to own a gun comes from the government. That makes absolutely no sense, since the government is one of the things you're supposed to be able to defend yourself from. And if it comes from the government, how come the Second Amendment stops the government from infringing on it? All of this is covered in detail in my video, How to Argue for Gun Control. So we can skip the next bit, where he doesn't understand what the militia is, doesn't understand the relationship between the states and the federal government, doesn't even seem to understand that state constitutions enumerate the same right, doesn't seem aware of the existence of the Ninth Amendment, and so on. None of the Founding Fathers, whether it be during the Constitutional Convention or in the Federalist Papers, ever talked about individual gun ownership. Lie! 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 I give several examples in my video. Check it out. Which brings us to the first Supreme Court case that I want to talk about. Presser v. Illinois. The court's decision was that the Second Amendment did not apply to the individual except as part of a government militia for the good of the United States. Lie, 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 oh, you get the idea. They absolutely affirmed that it was an individual right. 
It was only drilling and parading in groups that they said wasn't protected. And even then, it would be protected from federal action, just not state action. I quote, We think it clear that the sections under consideration, which only forbid bodies of men to associate together as military organizations, or to drill or parade with arms in cities and towns unless authorized by law, do not infringe on the right of the people to keep and bear arms. But a conclusive answer to the contention that this amendment prohibits the legislation in question lies in the fact that the amendment is a limitation only upon the power of Congress and the national government and not upon that of the state. But they also said, It is undoubtedly true that all citizens capable of bearing arms constitute the reserved military force or reserve militia of the United States as well as of the states. The states cannot, even laying the constitutional provision into question out of view, prohibit the people from keeping and bearing arms. There was a lot of stuff about this decision that was suspect, like saying that the right to peaceably assemble only existed for the sake of the right to petition. That's like saying the right to free speech only applied to speaking on religious matters. This is why later Supreme Court decisions went against it and said that not only was the right to keep and bear arms an individual right, but so was the right to peaceably assemble. It's important to note that- Oh my god, will you please stop the goddamn music? And at this point, the only practical firearms that existed were muzzle-loaded rifles, pistols, and shotguns. No, it isn't. Unless you want to say that the right to free speech only applies to soapboxes and the right to freedom of the press only applies to movable type machines. Which is why several ways to change the Constitution were built into it, like amendments. That's one way it can change. The only way, in fact. It can't be done by the Supreme Court. That's not within their powers. But notice that, unlike your stupid contention, the contention of all gun control nut bars, the Founders did not put in the right to keep and bear muskets. They were clear that it also applied to larger armaments like cannons. Why do you people keep ignoring that? In 1934, the first real gun control law was passed, the National Firearms Act. Five years after the law, we have our next Supreme Court case, U.S. v. Miller. I won't go into that in detail since I've thoroughly trashed it elsewhere. But I would point out for the sake of this debunking that the Miller decision used the excuse that the Second Amendment somehow, even though it doesn't say so, only applies to armaments used by the military. Since sawed-off shotguns aren't used by the military, the Second Amendment doesn't apply to them. They argued that since the whole point of the Second Amendment was so that citizens could own guns for the purposes of maintaining a well-regulated militia, it didn't apply to arms that couldn't be used for that purpose. I quote, In the absence of any evidence tending to show the possession or use of a shotgun having a barrel of less than 18 inches in length at this time has some reasonable relationship to the preservation or efficiency of a well-regulated militia, we cannot say that the Second Amendment guarantees the right to keep and bear such an instrument. And now, the gun control nut bars are trying to say the Second Amendment doesn't apply to military arms. By the way, it's not true, and wasn't true at the time, that no military used sawed-off shotguns. The Supreme Court was just ignorant about that. In fact, its only real purpose was to hide under your coat so that you could shoot people. That is an absolutely idiotic statement! But that aside, neither Congress nor the Supreme Court mentioned concealability as the reason. After all, pretty much all handguns could be concealed. The reason was more racism than anything else. There were two separate bank robberies committed by Sicilian Americans that made the news. And so the sawed-off shotgun got associated with Italians, which means it got associated with criminals. Just another part of the racist history of gun control. Want to know how big an idiot this guy is? Let's just skip to the part where he says, This is the gun show loophole, the thing that many people think should be closed. Let's be clear yet again. There is no gun show loophole. There never was any gun show loophole. This is a complete myth. I do have to give him credit for one thing. He does correctly describe the difference between automatic and semi-automatic and how machine guns and assault rifles are automatic. But then he says, 
Is the AR-15 an assault rifle? No, it was prior to 1986, but since then they've all been semi-automatic. Yeah, way to crash the car right before the finish line. The AR-15 has always been semi-automatic. The automatic version of the rifle is the M16. Is the AR-15 an assault weapon? That's when things get a little tricky. An assault weapon is a semi-automatic rifle with two or more of the following. And here we have another issue. I'm linking to my video on assault weapons versus assault rifles. In it, I show that there is no definition of assault weapon. Or rather, the definition is whatever politicians need it to be at the time. Laws banning or attempting to ban assault weapons define it all sorts of different ways, and there's no consistency to how they do it. But listen to how he keeps talking about it. A pistol grip. Yes, all AR-15s have that. So as long as it didn't have any more, it was completely legal. A folding or telescoping stock. In other words, things that have nothing whatsoever to do with the gun's lethality. Mostly they make it easier to hold, so way to be ableist there. I guess if you don't have the full range of motion in your arms or hands, you don't get your Second Amendment rights. Or it's banning safety features like muzzle guards, flash protectors, or sound suppressors. A grenade launcher. This, by the way, is the only time anyone in the gun industry referred to something as an assault weapon. When the Brunswick Corporation made the Rifleman's Assault Weapon in 1977, it was an RPG designed to be fired alongside an M16. Otherwise, nothing has ever been referred to in the industry as an assault weapon. It just isn't a term of art. A bayonet mount? Why would... Okay, next. A flash suppressor or a barrel capable of supporting one, which is not a silencer, it's this bit, which is a pretty important piece for not blinding the shooter and depending on the design reduces recoil. I guess I have to give him points for trying. He's doing a lot better than most of the gun control nut bars, but the guy isn't anywhere near the middle of the road like he claims. Why is it that the moderates and the middle of the road people just want to intrude on our right slightly less than the full-on cultists? But your firing rate is like 90% that of full auto, so close enough. And we're back to being dumb. The firing rate has nothing whatsoever to do with whether or not it's fully automatic. They are categorical differences. There's no close to automatic. It's either automatic or it isn't. In 2008, the Supreme Court heard D.C. v. Heller, the first Second Amendment case since before World War II. They effectively changed the interpretation of the Second Amendment from this to just this by saying that anyone can technically be part of the militia. As my video shows, this is not a change to the definition. It was always the case that anyone could be part of the militia. It was like that from the start. I even show examples. It doesn't really matter what the original intent of the Founding Fathers was. There was no guaranteed individual right to own guns under the Founding Fathers. There absolutely was. To deny that is to deny what they wrote over and over and over again. There were no machine guns or even semi-automatics when the Founding Fathers were around. Untrue and irrelevant even if it were. As I've tried to make abundantly clear, the framers of the Constitution were intelligent and forward-thinking, but the United States was a completely different place 230 years ago. The Bill of Rights is about universal principles. Universal principles never change. You don't suddenly lose Fourth Amendment rights because your papers and effects are in your phone instead of on pieces of paper in your home. That was a time when you were basically born, lived, and died in the same town. They didn't even have railroads yet, so they couldn't even imagine sitting in a metal tube and essentially teleporting from one side of the country to the other and back again all within the same day. State laws were far more important and effective back then. They aren't so much today. That has nothing to do with the principle of federalism. It has to do with centralized versus decentralized power. The Founders recognized that tyranny was a lot easier when power was centralized. They didn't want it that way. So they wrote the Constitution as a document of specific enumerated powers granted to the federal government. Not because it was too difficult to travel from one state to another, but because they were worried about the very concentration of power they just fought a war to get rid of. So using California's state gun control as an example of why gun control doesn't work is ridiculous. Why? It's pretty much the number one state for mass shootings. What is that if not a complete, total, and abject failure? 
perhaps looks something more like what Australia has. I covered Australia, whole section on it and how to argue for gun control. It doesn't help you. By the way, repealing the Second Amendment is not unconstitutional. You would have to pass an amendment to repeal that amendment, which is something we've totally done before. I don't really know what kind of point he's trying to make. You could say exactly the same thing about the First Amendment, or the Fourth. What kind of point is that? But the biggest change would be making guns look more like cars. You have to have a license to drive a car, and in the process of getting a license, you had to demonstrate the ability to drive and have basic knowledge of traffic laws. Yeah, because that works so well, doesn't it? Having a gun license could also take the place of needing a background check every time you buy a gun. And also destroy privacy and make guns easier to track. While you were looking at history, you must have missed the fact that this is always the first step to a fascist government taking over. Some people suggest having a title attached to every firearm, much like there is with your car. Oh, good luck with that. 3D printing is a thing, you know. And even absent that, if you have the skills, you can make fully automatic assault rifles with basic machinist tools. Many of the recent high-profile mass shootings were perpetrated by someone who bought the weapon only a few days earlier specifically for that purpose. Lie, 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 lie! By far, the overwhelming majority of them purchased their firearms months in advance as part of their planning for it. But mostly it would stop suicide. Oh, for the love of Mike, do you people never stop to ask why Japan, a country with basically no guns, has an even higher suicide rate than the U.S.? There are other ways to commit suicide, you know, and if someone's determined to do so, they will. I'm sorry, but it's absolutely sociopathic to talk about suicides as a reason for banning guns. And yes, states with mandatory waiting periods have lower rates of suicide. Outright lie! Even during the federal assault weapons ban, while there was a reduction in mass shootings, there were still mass shootings. The burner rate was actually higher, and it's lower after the ban expired. And that's the case even if you just look at firearm homicides. Simply shutting it down by saying that it's a God-given right or that any gun control leads to tyranny isn't going to cut it anymore. Well, good thing we have a ton more arguments that you saw fit to ignore. Likewise, the common talking point that gun control led to the Holocaust is just as ridiculous. Why? Because you say so? Why was Hitler so intent on disarming everyone but the Nazis? Why did he use Poland's gun registry to deal with the armed portion of the population before invading? Again, you and your source are going against established history. And by the way, an actual German does not make someone an authority on the Nazis. The question you people never seem to want to answer is, why did he never even try to take over Switzerland where people were armed to the teeth? There are other talking points and common sayings that gun owners use to stop the conversation though, like Guns don't kill people, people kill people. Which, yeah, but guns are specifically designed for killing, whether you're talking about animals or people. Knives and cars have other primary purposes, it's the gun that makes it so easy. That's the point! How else is a 92 pound elderly woman going to have any chance against that 250 pound gorilla breaking into her home? There's another term for making it easy. Equalizing. Over the history of personal armaments, it becomes less and less the case that the physically strong can threaten the weak. In the state of nature, that's always the case. They fight with sticks, they're a little more equal. Because it's actually inaccurate to say that weapons are force multipliers, as a lot of people do. Although they absolutely increase the amount of force that can be applied, there's a plateau. So it doesn't multiply it for the stronger person as much as it does for the weaker. And so you get an improvement with spears. With swords, they're even closer to equal, although there's still requirements of physicality. And then there are guns. Two people are armed, it's basically 50-50, at least as far as force is concerned. When you also consider that you have a natural benefit as a defender rather than an attacker, and attackers use their force advantage to overcome it, take out that advantage and the odds go to the defender. And I'm guessing that's why you didn't even mention defensive gun use, which happens hundreds of thousands or even millions of times a year. I'm linking to just a few recent examples to give you an idea. 
They're all within the last few weeks just to make it harder for myself. It wasn't that hard, actually. These stories are easy to find if you look. In the first one, a suspect evading the police tried to hijack a vehicle. The driver had a firearm, and despite the fact that the suspect was armed as well, the driver was able to injure the suspect, who was then apprehended by police. Who knows what would have happened if the driver hadn't been armed? It would have been nothing good, I can tell you that! In the second story, a woman was in her kitchen when a man started breaking through her back door. She shouted at him, told him this was private property, and he should go away. He didn't stop. He broke the glass of the door. So she went to her bedroom and retrieved her firearm. He kept slamming into her back door, so she fired. Police arrested him and took him to the hospital, where he died from his wounds. In the third story, an armed intruder was caught entering through a bedroom window. A resident saw he had a gun in his hand, so the resident grabbed a gun and fired first. In each case, innocent people defended themselves from potentially lethal attacks. This kind of story happens all the time, but you people never talk about them. Why is that? An armed society is a polite society. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really want to live in a society where people are nice to each other only because they're afraid of getting shot. Wow, seriously? That's not how it works, moron. If you're not even going to bother to understand the argument, then what's the point of even pretending to be rational? Because you aren't. Here's a hint. It's the person who has a weapon who becomes more polite, not the unarmed person. It doesn't matter. All of these are just ways to stop the conversation about gun control by shifting it to something else. Wow, confession through projection much? You're going to have to participate in the conversation eventually. Funny, that's what I keep saying to you people. As you can see, in video after video after video, I'm basically begging you people to go beyond your long debunked talking points and actually further the conversation. But you never do. You keep making stupid videos like this one, full of points we debunked long ago, while strawmanning or even completely ignoring our responses. Still waiting for a gun control nut bar to try and argue rationally. And yes, I'm a skeleton. You know the meme. So thanks for watching. Please hit like and subscribe, leave a comment, and go to donate.bogosity.tv to keep me doing what I do. And check out all the great content here, like this video selected just for you.